This is David. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bearer token using Azure Active Directory. A bearer token is a token, it's an uh, encoded text that you can send with a, uh, an API request. And it's a way of identifying the account under which that request will run. And it's issued by a trusted authority, such as Azure Active Directory. Bearer token is a, a standard in OAuth that uh, uh, takes several different forms. In the case of Azure Active Directory, it will take the form of a JSON web token, which is a specific format in which it identifies who the account is and certain properties about the account. We call those claims, information about the account, such as what permissions do they have? Um, and the account will need some permission to perform whatever action the API is expected to do. So if the API is expected to read documents in a OneDrive, then it must have, then that account must have permission to read those documents. If it's expected to send an email, then that document must have, that account must have permission to send emails. So, so I'm going to create one. The reason I use those examples is those are available through Microsoft Graph, which is a really powerful API that lets you access uh, information inside of Microsoft 365. And so I'll show I'll go I'll show you a video later on of how to use Microsoft for Graph. But right now, an essential part of that will be creating this token. That's what this video is going to focus on. Before you get started, you will have to register an application with Azure Active Directory. I've already done that, and you can see that uh, how I did that in this video right here, video number 137. It's only about seven and a half minutes long, so if you're unfamiliar with that, just go ahead and watch that. And then also, you want to grant permissions to the account that's associated with this application registration. And I covered that in this little four minute video here, number 138. And so uh, I'll go over into the Azure portal, and then I want to find Azure Active Directory. I click that, this icon here. I could just search for it. Active Directory, there it is right there. You can see that I have an app registration here. Here's the one that I created in the video. It's called GCAST App Registration. There's some important pieces of information that you'll need here. One is the client ID, and that refers to this particular app registration. We are going to need that. The tenant ID, so we know which actor Active Directory to authenticate against. And uh, the permissions, the API permissions right here. Um, by default, the it comes with user.read, but I'm going to add a new permission here. And I'm going to use Microsoft Graph application permissions. This is actually covered in the earlier video, but I'll do it again. And what I want to do is I want to give call an API in Microsoft Graph, which will read user information. In order to do that, I would need this user.readall information. So I'll check that and say add permissions here. And it says it does require admin consent, uh, which is not yet granted. So I need to click that to say grant admin consent. You have to be a, logged in as an admin in order to do that step. And uh, now it has this, this uh, account does have user.readall. So I want to create a token that's going to include this account, which has permission to read all user information. And I'll send that token with uh, an API request to read user information. The way that I create that, uh, oh yeah, the last thing I wanna do is um, create an application secret. So under in the app registration under certificates and secrets, I wanna go through here and add a new secret. I'll call this one GCAST secret two. And I'll just take the default expires in six months. You can customize that if you want. And there's the value. This part here is really important. You notice I've created secrets in the past, and they're even though they exist, I can no longer read their value. It's that value that I need. So as soon as I create that, I want to copy this and I want to put it in a safe place. I say uh, I say safe because if this is compromised, if somebody gets a hold of this, it's like getting the password to a user account. This essentially works as a password. So keep this safe. Um, ideally, when in that production, you probably want to put a, something like Azure Key Vault. In the meantime, maybe lock it down in a folder with some permissions on it that uh, external users can't get to. But it's important that you keep the secret. It's important that you record it right now because when I go back to look at this tomorrow, I'll see something like this where it's masked out. This is my only chance to actually save that. All right, so now the next thing I want to do is to uh, call an API, and the API will uh, request a token 
from Azure Directory and request a token from Azure Active Directory in this tenant. For this demo, to call that API, I'm going to use a tool called Postman, which you can download for free at postman.com. It's a really lightweight, very powerful tool. And it's um, I actually have that installed already. There's Postman. And this is the endpoint right here that I want to hit. HTTPS slash slash login dot Microsoft Online dot com slash something slash OIF2 slash V2.0 slash token. And that something will be the tenant ID of your Azure Directory tenant. And that's one of the things I pointed out earlier that I said you really need to hang on to that. So what I'll do is in order not to lose that, I'm just going to open up another portal.azure.com and jump and log in here. Open up Azure Active Directory. And here an app registration. Um, actually, tenant ID is here on the overview page of it, but it's also an app registration. This app registration here, there's the tenant ID right here. Tent directory, parentheses, tenant ID. I want to copy that and in Postman here, I'll use that. That becomes part of the URL. And then I'm going to post to that URL some form data. So in Postman, I can just select X, uh, the, the type of data I'm posting, whether it's JSON or, but I'm going to use XWW form URL encoded. Uh, you can set it here in Postman, or you can do it in the headers. There actually is a content type application next to You can do it that way as well. Postman makes it pretty easy here. And the, here's the four form pieces of data that I want to set. Client ID, client secret, scope, and grant type. The scope for Microsoft Graph, this is going to be specific to Microsoft Graph, and so the scope is going to be HTTPS colon whack whack graph.microsoft.com slash dot default. The grant type will be client underscore credentials. Those will be the same every time for an MS Graph API. And then these will change. I'm going to copy the client ID from app registration. There's my client. I'm going to copy that right there. Copy it, 589 something. And put that in as the client ID and the client secret is the one that I just created. Which is right here, client secret. I'm going to grab that client secret here. Paste that in here and that should be sufficient. I'm going to send this HTTP post to this endpoint so it'll know what Azure Active Directory tenant to send it to. It knows the client ID and the client secret, so it knows what app registration to use. I click on send, and the response was a 200, which means it was good. And what came back is this access token. And I said this was a JSON web token or a JWT. Well, it sure doesn't look like JSON to me. However, it is. It's actually encoded JSON. What I can do is go back and I'll go to a site called JWT.ms. This allows me to decode the current token. So I paste it in here that automatically I see here's all sorts of information about this. You know, these are claims. AUD and ISS are set to these things here. You wonder what those are. They're actually described over here. AUD identifies the intended recipient. In this case, it's Microsoft Graph. ISS is like a kind of security token and so on. Uh, and then what's important here is the roles. I added user.read.all, and that's a role that's going to be added here. This is significant because if you go back and you change this, let's say I go into here and I add some more permissions to do some other things, you know, let's say, uh, I don't know, bookmark. Uh, something else bookmark read that all and then that even if I had it here it won't be part of that token that token won't be updated so if you change the permissions in order for that to take effect you need to regenerate this token using postman or using whatever I mean just sending that HTTP post request uh, it doesn't it could be through code or you know whatever uh so this is um this is how you this is a JSON web token it's encoded JSON 
and I've shown you how to use Azure Active Directory to authenticate a user, in this case, the service account for the um, app registration and produce this token, which includes uh, that this is actually, in fact, the user they claim to be, and these are the roles, and there's some other claims information here as well. You can use this and pass this on to an API. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.